continue, we left off 10a, the third line from the top. There's one pile of chametz, and you have in front of you two houses that were already searched, already checked. 10a, the fourth line. Oh, so Agbor and the mouse came with shakal and took food from this pile. We don't know. It went, up, it went into this house, it went into this house. So Hainush Neshvil is exactly the case of the two paths. Now we learned in the Mishnah. Um, it's pure ones now. We learned in Ksuv. It's Neshvil. Two paths. Echatame vechatoy. One, there's a, there's a dead corpse across the whole path. So it's impossible to, to travel through the, this path without getting impure, without uh, hovering right, right. over, over, touching or hovering over this, uh, this corpse. Right, right. Echatoy. And one path is pure. Is okay. He went on one of them, and then he went and, 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 and engaged in Tadis. So if he's impure, he would make these pure uh, fruits, he would make it impure. Uboch and his friend came, he went on the other path, and then he went and, and did Tadis. So Rabbi says, If each one comes to the best and asks separately, he says, this is what happened, am I pure, am I, am I pure? Then both of them are pure, <laughs> even though it's an impossibility. It's impossible for each one of them, to, both of them, to be pure because one of the roads, this one went on this path, this one went on the other path. One of them is certainly impure. But since each one is coming to ask independently, therefore each one is a doubt. I don't know. Did he go on the pure one, in the impure yeah. one? So this is a public. Any doubt in a public right, public right. place, we are lenient. So therefore, we can be lenient. If they both come simultaneously, they both come to the court, the court can't tell a lie, the court can't say both of you are pure, it's impossible, one of them is certainly impure. Abiyasi says, Bankach or Bankach to me. Either way, even if they come separately, they're tummy. So Rabbi clarifies. If they come simultaneously together, surely everyone holds your tummy. Right, no one argues. Even Rabbi Yehuda agrees. But if one after the other, even Abiyasi agrees, since each one is coming independently. And it's a doubt. I went on one of the roads. I don't know. On the pure, impure, not pure. So each one we can be lenient. The argument in Nabihud He comes to the court and he asks on himself and on his, on his partner. He said, This is what happens. I'm asking you, what's the law for me and my partner? So Nabiyasi, Madam Lila Basak, says it's like it's like simultaneously. Yeah, you're telling the Bezdin to say that you're both, you're both pure. It's not possible. So therefore, we have to say you're both impure. But Rabbi Yehuda, Madame Belazach is it. Rabbi Yehuda compares it to one coming after the other. Because Rabbi Yehuda said the Bezdin doesn't have to say a lie. They don't have to say you're both pure. They'll say you're pure. And you'll understand that the same thing also applies to your friend. Mm. Now, why isn't saying a lie when you say that you're both pure? Why isn't that a lie? Just like if you're saying, I'm saying, no, it's a saying you're both tummy. How could you say you're both tummy, you're both impure, when one of them is certainly, yes. certainly pure? Maybe not, maybe they're both pure, we don't know. So he said, because really this is only, only rabbinically. Biblically, even if they both come together, Biblically, you're both pure. Because whenever there's a doubt, each one there's a doubt. Whenever there's a doubt, the Torah says you're lenient if it's in a public place. Thais was asked, why do they have the argument about the Taras? They have the argument, and then he went ahead. Each one crossed this road, one road. He, his friend crossed the other road. One of them is impure, the impure. Then they were engaged they, with their hands. They were engaged in pure fruit. Taras, so did they contaminate the fruit? The food, or didn't they contaminate the fruit? Why do you have to talk about contaminating the food and not contaminating the food? The question is, are they contaminated or they're not contaminated? Do you have to sprinkle the, 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 the red heifer, the ashes, or they have to purify themselves? They came in contact with, the, with a corpse. Why do you have to, who cares about the, the, the contaminating food? The question is, are they impure or they're not impure? Taisa says no, because according to everyone, they would have to purify themselves. Why? The, the people themselves would have to purify them, because we're worried, if not, what if they're both going to come and touch the, the food truma, simultaneously, yeah. Yeah. touch the truma simultaneously. Then it's impossible to say that the truma is pure, because certainly one of them is impure. 
So therefore, the question was only not about them. Then we tell them rabbinically, go ahead and go to the, and uh, sprinkle the red heifer and purify yourselves. Question is regarding the food. Food cannot be purified. Once the food is impure, it's impure. You can't dip food into a mikveh. <laughs> so that's the question about the food. Is the food contaminated or not? So it depends if they came simultaneously or not. So to over here, so, so to over here, this answers our question about the chametz. If they both come, if they come separately, the owner of this house, and the owner of this has come to the rabbi separately. This is what happened. There was a pile of chametz, and a mouse came and took from the bread from the pile and he entered out. I don't know which house. See, the rabbi will tell you're okay. You don't have to search. The next one comes and he asks, you're not okay. The question is, if they come simultaneously, or if one asks for him and for his friend, that's the argument in Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Yezid. Okay, that's this question. This case. Now the Gemara gives another scenario. Suffolk all, Suffolk loyal. I'm not even sure if I saw the mouse take food from the pile, but I didn't see him enter the house. Did he enter the house? Didn't he enter the house? Do we have to search? Don't we have to search? So I know Bika. This is the argument of Bika. This is the case of Bika, the valley that has many fields. Look to the Nablaz and Rabbanas, the argument of Nablaz and Rabbanas. Now we learned in the Mishnah. We learned in, uh, in Baba Basra. A person who enters a field, a, a, a valley, which has many fields in, in the winter. The rainy season, the valley is considered a private, private. Why? Because since in the rainy season it starts growing already, things start growing. So you have no right to trample on someone else's field. Yeah. During the summer months, nothing is growing there. It's a public, it's open, people go yeah. out. But here, it's, it's a private property, and you're not allowed to trample on someone else's things that are growing. So it's, it's like considered like a Rishus HaYachit. The Tumma beside the plate, and there's a Tumma in one of the fields. I don't know which. There's a corpse there, 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 there's a, there's a cemetery. Uh, so there's a plot. A plot. Uh, so I, but I don't know which field. And the person says, I walked in this place, in this valley, in the winter. I don't know. That I entered into this field that I had the corpse or not, I don't know. So Rabbi Lezer Metayer and Chum Metam. It's an argument Rabbi Lezer and the Chum. Rabbi Lezer says he's pure. Chum say Metam. Why is he pure? It's a private domain. Whenever there's a doubt in a private domain, you're always strict. So how how could Rabbi Lezer say you're pure? Shai Rabbi Lezer Aim is Suffolk Biator, Suffolk Magatum Tome. When do we say that whenever there's a doubt, you're strict and you say that it's impure? It's if it's for certain that it is there. Question is, did he touch it? Didn't he touch it? But if we're not even certain that he even w went into the field in the first place, if the whole underlying assumption is question, maybe he never came. He was never even there. Then, even in a private domain, you, you, you're, you're lenient. Some don't have the version, take out the version. It seems like Rashi it it took out the version. And this is an argument in Abulaz and Rabbanon. Because in our case, there is no argument. No. Because in our case, since it's only rabbinic, searching for chametz is only rabbinic. Right. So therefore, according to everyone, even, even according to the rabbis here in this case, we would tell him, when in doubt, we're not even sure if the mouse even entered the house, you don't, you don't have to search. Teisvis asks, why is it any different than the previous case? Firstly, what's the point? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, The Gemara said earlier that after you've searched the house, we assume that it's that it's okay, right? If there was one one pile of chametz, and we know for certain that it entered the house, we're not sure which house. There were two houses, so we say each house separately. We say let's assume that there's no chametz in this house since it was searched. 
So how much more so in this case, when we never even saw the mouse enter the house? There's only one house, but we're not even certain that the mouse entered the house. Surely we can rely, we say, that it was searched, and therefore there's no reason to suspect that there's chametz there. Why do I need to bring from uh, Rabbi Elezer? So the Roshanim answer, on the contrary, there, because I saw for certain that he entered another house, so therefore I can say he entered the other house and not his, this house. But in this case, I never saw him enter a house. So I can't say, I can't say, well, he entered another house. There's only one house here. So the house and the courtyard are like one extension. So therefore, let us say that uh, for certain, we can't, that he has to check again. Because since he, the mouse took the, 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 the chametz from the pile, took the bread, and mice like to run into a house, right? <laughs> right? That's the first spot. They like to drive you nuts. <laughs> so therefore, surely he entered a house. So we say no. That's we bring in the case of the valley, that since each field is separate, and I'm not even sure he entered in the first place, so therefore, when in doubt, you say he didn't enter, and you don't have to search again. Okay. Now the Gemara gives another scenario. All... Let's say the mouse went in. I saw the mouse take a, a piece of bread from the pile and he entered into the house. So I had to search over again. No bother, can he search? And I didn't find anything. What do I do now? So here it's an argument that I made in Abana. Now we learn the Mishnah. Any place, we, we assume that there's a tumma there, there's a corpse there, there's a... There's a an impurity there, it remains the status of impure. Actually, until you know for certain where the tumma is. What's he talking about over there? He's talking about over there a pile. Let's say a pile. There was three piles of stone. Within one of the piles, there, there was there was a piece of a corpse, and then they all got mixed up. So if you check one pile and you see there's nothing there, so that pile is pure and the other two are in doubt. You check two and there's nothing there, those two are pure and the other is doubt. What if you check all three and you couldn't find anything? Mm -hmm. They're impure. Because Amir says, until you locate what happened to this impurity, maybe, maybe, so then it's still impure. All of them are impure. The rabbis say, no. The rabbis say, Baidik. You search until you reach a stone, until you reach bedrock. virgin earth, bedrock, that wasn't not untouched. If you don't find anything, you can say, hey, there's, there's nothing no, here. Yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Any, maybe, a, yeah. maybe a weasel went and grabbed it and took no, it. I don't know. Nothing here. So, therefore. So by, by searching of the Chama, he said, even a may will agree that if he's searching and doesn't find anything, we could be lenient and we can say that a mouse ate it and, you, and you're fine, you're okay. Yeah. 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 So Pace was asked, because it's, no, it's, it's, it's only rabbinic. Since it's only rabbinic, there's Midar Aysa, there it's a biblical. Impurity is biblical, so therefore a may is strict. But in the case of searching Chama, it's only rabbinic, like your mother said, we learned yesterday. Therefore, even a mayor will agree, you don't have to be strict, you don't have to search over again. Taisa says, what's even the thought? What's even the having minute? What, what you, why, why search over again? I search, there's nothing there. What do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? What, what are you telling me? What's the issue here? What's going to help me if I search over again? It's like counting the votes over again. I'm counting the same fraudulent vote over and over again. I'm not going to get a different conclusion. I mean, what are you wasting my time? What's the point? What do you want him to do? Search again. He searched. He did a good search. Taisa says, no, we're talking about it. From the Mishnah's point of view, you search, and by searching, you fulfill your biblical obligation of getting rid of chametz, and you, you don't have to nullify. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, in this case, we're telling him that biblically, according to our mayor, maybe maybe you should be biblically be obligated to nullify. So we say, no, you don't have to. That even according to our mayor, since it's only rabbinic. What do you mean it's only rabbinic? Like he said, because really you have another option. You don't even have to do searching. You can go just, just nullify. Since the rabbis forced you to search, we don't give you the second option. But since forcing you to search is only rabbinic, therefore the rabbis don't make you search over again. 
Biblically, I don't have to worry. I searched, I didn't find anything. So finish, I don't have to nullify that. I was saying, you don't have to, can't, you don't have to nullify it. Pesos argues with Rashi. Gemara says clearly it's an argument that may Rabbanu. That the case of Chametz would be an argument that may would agree by also by Chametz. According to Rabbeinu, you would have it wouldn't be good. So what do you mean? So what do you have? What are you supposed to do? So he says you have to nullify it. Okay. Now the Gemara gives another scenario. Very interesting scenarios. None of these are brought down in the in the Rishonim and the Paskim because they say it's so far fetched. It's not like practical. The halachas, those who collect the halachas, this is not like practical thing. We have a mouse and you have. It's more like theoretical in, in, in the concept. We got mice. You don't know the storyline. <laughs> <laughs> right. They must have had good exterminators in those days. So this is more like a you know, theoretical the in theory, the concept. Now he gives another scenario. Fascinating scenario. So he says, All, what if he went, the mouse went into the house? He went to Bada. He searched for Hashka and he found the Chamas. He found Chamas. The question is do we say this is the Chamas that the mouse, so the mouse brought, brought in, in or, or not? Maybe another not the Chamas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he still has to continue searching. Right. In other words, you go into the first room and you search and you find right away. So stop the search. Call the search off. I found it. The missing has been found. Mm-hmm. She says, not simple. Look, the term argument in Nebuchadnezzar of Shimon Gamliel. Itanya will in the Bright says, Sod the Shaneva Bakev. There's a field. I know there's a there's a there's a grave, grave in there, right, but I don't yeah. know where in the field. I can't remember right. where it is. Whoever enters in the field, you tell me because maybe you're stepping over the grave. You're right. impure. Uh, then I find the cave. I find the grave. Then whoever enters is torch. I say, that this is the grave that was lost. I don't know for certain, but I assume. So I found it already. I call off the search, and right. the rest of the field is, is pure. Yeah, but Shimon Gamliel argued. Yeah, no, searching. they want to call us the Kula. Maybe this is another well, grave. One, right. You have to search the whole field and yeah. find, locate it, make sure yeah. there's no other grave. Right. So to over here. If you search and immediately found the Chametz as soon as you started searching, according to Rebbe, you would say... Mission accomplished. <laughs> no, Found. No. Shimon Gamliel says, no, 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 no. You have to continue searching the rest of the house. I'm not sure this is the bread that the mouse brought in. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Then the Gemara asks another scenario. You left nine pieces. And suddenly you found ten. So am I only looking for one piece? And no, so only... So do I say that this, this is the one extra piece? Or do I say? Uh, <laughs> okay. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell them later. Okay. Okay. From the Daphne Mishalei. Okay. I got to run out of here. Okay. I'm sorry. He needs to have some matzah yud. So the question is, do we say that this is the original nine? You just added another piece. So you put on nine pieces to check for comments. And then you find ten. So maybe it's a whole different set. Maybe the nine is lost and this is another set. So I have to go looking for the nine pieces. So I say, no, I have the original nine and then someone added another piece. Someone, someone placed another piece. Look to the Rebbe with Rabban. Look to the Rebbe. It's an argument with Rabban. Tan, the Rebbe, I say, niach man. A person set aside a hundred dollars for Maisu Sheni that, that you have to, that you have to, a hundred dinars, you have to uh, take your Shalayim, it's sacred, right. and you have to use it, time. use it to eat in your Shalayim. Yeah. And then suddenly he comes back, he Maisu finds two hundred. So, so the Chulin, the Maisu Sheni, but often was ever that to be there. But what we say is that by mistake he mixed the two together a hundred of his regular money, right. secular money, and a hundred of sacred money, and it's all mixed together. And therefore, what should he do? So Rashi says, here, Rashi says, he should take a hundred dollars, another hundred dollars, and he should say, wherever, whichever these a hundred dollars is sacred, should be, should be 
And now, now I'm consecrating this other hundred dollars. I'm transferring the holiness from this hundred dollars to this hundred dollars. So this is sacred, and these two hundred dollars are not sacred. Rashi elsewhere in Bay and the Tzitzit says you have a simple solution. Why do you have to bring another hundred dollars? Just say a hundred. Take out a hundred from this two hundred. It says if this is the hundred that was originally sacred, it's fine. If not, the hundred that's sacred is now transferred. That sanctity is now transferred to this hundred, and then the other hundred you can use for whatever you want, wherever you are. No, Chum says hakel chuli. Chum say no, this is all chuli, because people don't mix. You don't mix sacred money with non-sacred. So surely this is other money. It's another set of money. This two hundred is another set of money. So too, according to the rabbis, you would say in our case, if you put nine pieces of chumis and you find ten, this is not the original set. So I have to go searching now for nine pieces who got lost somewhere in the house. I have to do the search over again. According to Rebbe, no. This is the original nine. They just added, someone added the piece. So what do you mean you find ten different scattered pieces? You find like a pile. A pile, yeah. So it's not like you put out your piece of chumis to check and you find an extra piece of chumis. That wouldn't be a problem. I'm not discussing you find like a pile, a bundle. Well, yeah. In one place. You left nine pieces and you put that? Yeah, you find that, yeah. What if in the you the Matsutasha, what if you leave ten pieces and then you find nine? What do you do now? So I know this this is the end. Tanya, the, the end of the price. Tanya in the price in the Messiah Matsumban. You left two hundred Maiso Shani money and you come back, you find a hundred. So we say that behold, mana monarch, muna and mana munach and mana mutl. Might back be the original money, so he you say to... the mon- the original hundred was left, and he took a hundred. So it's but it's still the original the original miser money, sacred money. Surely it's different money. The money that was uh, here was taken, and this hundred is is not miser money. Right, it's right, right. So to over here, so to over here, you say the same thing. That according to the the question is if these you let you you left ten pieces now you find nine so do you say it's the same ten and someone took someone took away a piece or a mouse took away a piece or do you say no it's a new it's a new set and the and the ten is you have to go searching for for the ten. Ironically, in the case of the the mission we're bringing down, Rebbe's actually being more makel. You don't have to replace two hundred dollars according to Rebbe, right? Oh, so tell you because the Rebbe is following his opinion that whatever you find, like in the field, you lost the cave, or cave so if you find it, you assume that that's it. So the Rebbe says also, you find $100, you say, this is the 100 from the from the original 100. The original 100, I have to go looking, maybe it was replaced, maybe it's something else. Now the Gemara asks, with side two, the Gemara asks a different scenario. If he left chametz in this corner and he finds it in a different corner, so it's an argument. Put the Rabbim. I'm going to leave with Rabbanu. Tanu and the Brayse. Hardum she'avad bebayis. You lost an axe in the house. Habayis tummy and the house is tummy. Why? Shani Eimer. I say Adam tummy nichnas asam enatlo. A person who's impure, a person who's not careful about purity, went in and he moved things around. He, must, he may have touched everything. So everything in the house is now tummy, is now impure. Hmm. The says, no, the house is pure. I say, where's the axe? He, le- he left, he, he lent it to someone, he forgot. He has early Alzheimer's, he forgot that he lent it. Yeah. It's not lost. He thinks it's lost, but the owner took it. The owner is pure. He took it and he gave it to someone. He lent it to someone. Or he himself moved it from one corner to the other. I mean, the chum seems to have extreme position. Every time you're missing something in your house, you're going to say, oop, the whole house is coming. Yeah, because what happened? It must be. It must be someone came in. Someone who's impure came in and he felt at home and he touched everything. Why are you bringing in corners? Who's talking about corners? You started out if the axe was lost. Who's talking about corner? 
And the Monarch Surin Master is missing words. This is what the Braise says. Kardum Shaova, the Bayes, a Bayes Tomish. And the Amen, I say, Adam Tomish, not Lo. If it's lost, we say a person who's impure came in and he took it, so he touched everything else in the house and uh, contaminated it. Or even if it wasn't lost, he plays the axe in one corner, he comes into the house, he finds it in a different corner, so we say the same thing. He moved it from this corner and he left it and then meanwhile he touched everything in the house. The house is pure. He's a bottle. He lost his mind. If he can't remember, but he lent it. It's not lost. He lent it to someone else. Was shocked. He forgot. Oy, or he took it from this corner and he placed it in, in another corner. And he forgot. So therefore, by chametz, it's the exact same thing that we say. So according to the rabbis, he would have to search. According to the rabbis, you say that maybe, maybe the mouse took it. It's, this is not the chametz that he placed. This is the chametz that the mouse brought. Mm-hmm. It's not the same chametz that he placed aside after he searched. But even if it's the mouse brought in, why don't you just say this is it? Didn't we learn earlier? That if you find, if you lost the caver, if you lost the grave in a, in a field. So Rebbe says, the, the first grave you find, you assume that's it. Okay. So even if a mouse brought chametz, we found it. So what's the problem? Why do you have to search the rest of the house? No. Because they hold like, they hold like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, who says you have to search the whole field. Rabbi's hold that once, once I already know that the mouse brought in, introduced something new into the house, I can't just assume that this is it. Maybe there's more. I have to continue searching the rest of the house. <laughs> you know, once another cook adds salt, you got to assume the soup is salted, right? Right. Ahmed Abed Abed said, Ach, bar nichnes, we kick a buffet. If a mouth goes into the house and there's bread in his mouth, nichnes, ach, and he goes in afterwards. A matzah pedud, and he finds crumbs, sadr bedika. You have to search. Why? You can't assume. If there's enough crumbs to meet the whole bread, enough to match the whole entire bread, nevertheless, you can't assume that this is the bread that the mouse brought in because mice don't leave crumbs. <laughs> they don't. So, so this is not it. This is other bread. So you have to search for the bread that the mouse brought in. Another thing Rabbi says, Tinnik Nichnas, if you see a child enter into the house, a house that was already searched, the kicker be other, you're walking in with a piece of bread, and you walk in afterwards and matzah you find crumbs on the floor. Here you don't have to check. Because it's the way of a child to leave crumbs. That's the way of children. Children leave crumbs. They don't eat every crumb. They leave crumbs. They make a mess. They leave crumbs. So therefore, even if it doesn't match the whole bread, you can assume he ate and whatever was left over, he left crumbs. Others say that um, Taisa says no. Taisa says that the child also is enough crumbs to fit the whole the whole piece of bread that we saw the child brought in. And even according to Abshim Ben Gamliel, who says if you find if you lose a grave in a field, the first you don't say the first grave you find, you assume that's it. Here, Abshim Gamliel would agree because here you have proof, evidence. Because that's the nature of a child. So surely this is the bread that the child brought in. Because he went in immediately after and he sees the, the crumbs. So surely this is what this is the handiwork of the child. So even according to Shem Gamliel, you don't have to check the rest of the house. Okay. But boy, Rav Rav asked a question. Achbar Nichnas. You see a mouse go into a house that was searched for chametz. We kick up a even with a piece of bread and the mouse of the. In the mouth of the, the mouse. Achber yeitz. Then you see a mouse gleave. We kick a befiv. Now you can't recognize mice. They all look the same to us. The question is, me amrin. Do we say hi no hi the all hi no hi the nafek? Is is the mouse? I do recognize that. It's the same bread that he brought in. It's the same bread that he's bringing out. 
So, so problem solved. I don't have to go search the house. I deal with perhaps Acherinu. Maybe, maybe it's a different piece of bread. If you're going to tell me, I know, I know, all, I know, not even going to say no. In this case, we can safely assume it's the same mice, the same mouse, the same bread. He went in and he went out. So there's no reason to search. But what if, if it's a different mouse? How do I know it's a different mouse? Because a white mouse went in, a black mouse, I can't tell one mice from the other, but I see the color. A black mouse goes out, the kick of mouse. Do we say, surely it's a different mouse, surely it's a different piece of bread. They don't, perhaps, he grabbed it out from the other mouse. He grabbed the, the bread. It's the same bread. It's a different mouse. Or maybe it's the same bread. You're going to tell me, mice are respectful to each other. They don't grab each other's bread. What if a mouse goes in with a bread in his mouth, and a weasel goes out, and a weasel goes out, a weasel goes out with a piece of bread. Mao, do we say, A weasel surely took it from the mouse. Perhaps, it's different. Because if he would have taken the bread from the mouse, not only would he take the bread, a weasel, it was like a family of cats, and the cat family would also take the mouse, the mice itself, the mouse itself he would eat, he would take the mouse, grab the mouse, not just the bread. <laughs> So therefore, if he's just taking the bread, surely it's not coming from the mouth. Yeah. If you want to tell me, no. Yeah. That you're correct. That if the weasel would have taken the, the bread from the, ma- from the mouth, the mouth of the mouth, he would have also taken the mouse itself. What if If a mouse enters into the house and there's a piece of bread in the mouth, in the mouth, the holder yotzes, and a weasel goes out. The kicker viach for the fichol, and there's two things in the mouth of the weasel: a mouse and a piece of bread. Mouth, hoch avadi here certainly you surely it's the same one. The mouse caught the the weasel caught the mouse and he caught the bread. I do not perhaps no. If that's the case, he should have uh, the bread should have been in the mouth of the of the, in the mouth of the mouse. He should have grabbed the, the mouse while the mouse was holding the piece of bread in his mouth. So the fact that he's grabbing the mouse and a piece of bread, it's a different piece of bread. It's not the same mouse that had the bread. I do well, perhaps no, it shouldn't be susu enough. The mouse got so scared of the weasel, he dropped the bread. And that explains why the mouse grab is holding in his mouth the mouse separately. The weasel is holding his mouth, the mouse, the ma- mouse separately, and the bread separately. But it's the same mouse and the same bread. Take a look. We don't know the answer to all these questions. Eliyahu, we ought to come and give us the answer to all these questions. These are very, like, very far-fetched questions, but just in theory, in concept, the mother is asking all these questions. Boy, Robert, Robert asked. If you have a piece of bread high up, high up, so way up. Like you have a piece of bread, we're just going to assume that's the same piece of bread. No, but you have to do the search all over again, search the whole house all over again. So this is take. So since it's take, I guess you don't have to. It's, a, it's in doubt. You're lenient. The whole thing is medrabanan, so you don't Boy, Rabbi Rabbi says, you can rely on the bit. Boy, Rabbi, kikar b'shmei kair. If there's a piece of bread, but high up, high up on the shelf, you can't reach it. Sadduch sulam ladu, you have to bring a ladder to take it down when you're searching the chametz. We'll just leave it there. Ain't sadduch, you don't need it. Mi amrina, do we say, kula hai le atrechinu rabbanon? The rabbis wouldn't make you work so hard. Kibun le nachas, lachas, minafshe, lachas minafshe, lachas minafshe, we're not worried since it doesn't, it's not going to come down by itself. So what are you worried about? You can come to eat it. Just leave it there. There's no need to remove it on Pesach. Obviously you'll be mevat, but we're talking about the gazera. Right, so you, you can nullify the chametz, and that's enough. There's no need to go actually physically. The rabbis tell you you have no option. You must. The only option to get rid of chametz is by not by searching it and get, getting rid of it. But in this case, the rabbis didn't force you the option B. You have option A. You can just cancel it and nullify it. perhaps in the Maybe it'll fall down. Also, and then you come to eat it. So therefore, the rabbis will tell you you have to get rid of that chametz as well. 
So in other words, biblically, I definitely violate this chametz, even though I can't reach it. But I know about it. Even though it's hard to reach, biblically, uh, you ever buy it all by a mud, you definitely have to get rid of it, either canceling or physically removing it. But you can't say, well, since I can't reach it, so maybe I don't violate any prohibition. doesn't matter. It's definitely violated prohibition. The question is, rabbinically, do they force you to remove it? If you want to tell me, Usually, whenever it says "mintim zaleimah," that I'm involved, that's the halach. That's talking the halach. You do have to get rid of it. If it's high up, you do have to take a ladder and you have to get rid of it because maybe it'll fall down. Vasel lemichli, kike beboyer. What if the the bread is in the pit, deep down in a hole? Sadik sulam la leisa. They have to bring a ladder to to take it out of the hole, pick it up, lift it up from the hole. But yein sadik. Oh, Chavadeh here for certain Levida the Salkim and Afshi. It definitely doesn't come on its own. And it's not, it's not exactly falling down. Over there it can fall down. How is it going to get out of the pit? To the, to the, to up, up. To the, to the levels. And here I don't have to worry. Maybe for some reason you'll have to go do some business in the pit. Even if you want to say, but this case we don't say la locha and timsulema because it's a very far fetched. It's much more likely things can fall down. You rattle the, the bookcase or something, and something falls down. But the, how is it going to jump up from the pit to the floor? That that's so far fetched. You don't have to worry about. Kika, but what if you're going to say that yes, we do have to worry about even the pit? What if kicker be If a mouse. Takes a uh, not a mouse, a snake takes a piece of bread and slithers into his hole. Do I have to bring a, a, ma- a snake charmer to, 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 to seduce the snake out of its hole and to bring the bread out of its hole to get rid of it? They ain't sadik. What's the question? Begufi at the Rabbanan. The rabbi is forced in begufi personally to, to search for chamas. To pay money to go hire a snake charmer. In Manhattan, go looking for snake charmer. <laughs> but also, I mean, how, is, how are you going to get, how, how are you worried that bread's going to come back out from the hole? The snake's going to bring it back yeah, out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you doing perhaps? No, there's no difference. Take it. We don't know the answer. Even though your mother said earlier, when you rent, if someone rents a house, and the, the, rent, the owner was supposed to search for chamas, and he didn't, and you have to rent someone, to hire someone to search for you, nevertheless, you can't even get your money back you can, you, because a person is happy to spend money to do a mitzvah. So what's the question here? You tell me, uh, uh, surely a person will be happy to spend money. You. Was... Oh, because here there's a doubt. Maybe the snake ate it. Maybe the snake finished it. Oh. I'm not even sure the chametz is still there. And who says it's going to come out of the hole? You know, the whole thing is in doubt. So to spend money for something like that, that maybe the rabbi is not obligated the third Mishnah. Look, look at Mishnah. And Abu Dain, and Abu Dain says, a bait in the air, you dalin, you search uh, the night, the eve of the 14th. Ubi, you dalin, you have to search again. That's what the mother learns in the beginning. And Abu Dain is telling me, you have to search again in the morning, and a search again in Bashasa beer when you burn the chametz, in the 11th hour when you burn the chametz. I mean, 11 o'clock in the, in the, in the, in the Six hours. If you didn't search the eve of the 14th, you should search on the 14th. In the morning. The Rashi says, means the time when you burn, meaning 11 o'clock in the sixth hour. If they didn't search when you when the, in the time, Rashi says, in the afternoon of the 14th, up until young. But not on Yom Why shouldn't you check on Yom Tov? We'll see, we'll see okay. so. Masha Meshayir, Yanichenu, Betzina, whatever is left over, after you finish searching and you still want to eat, yet whatever is left over, Yanichenu, you should keep a Betzina hidden, they should eat sort of Dika Achra, you shouldn't have to search afterwards. What, when, which scenario would you have to search afterwards? We already learned the mission, you don't have to worry that a mouse went. So even if I leave it out in the open, what am I worried? I don't have to worry a mouse is going to take it. No, but if you're missing, a piece. you're missing a piece, or if I'll see the mice with my own eyes, I'll see the mouse grab the hummus, and you have to do the search the whole house over again. So to avoid that, just cover it up, keep it hidden. And some say the, the mission is precise. Mishmashaya means only 
the food that you're leaving over to eat. You want to eat supper because you search right away the first opportunity when it's still even a little light. As soon as the stars come out. So you, 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 you still eat chametz, that supper. Or in the morning breakfast, you can still eat chametz. But everything else, some say, you have to burn immediately. But our custom is no. We leave everything, we burn everything the next day. We don't do any burning the night of, of the searching. So, so whatever you leave over, whatever you found, whatever you leave over, whatever you found. Maybe in those days there was nothing to find. There was no, hardly any chametz all year round. You were lucky if you found any chametz. So whatever you leave over, you should uh, put away. <coughs> Teisvah argues with Rashi. Teisvah says that if, if, if Bamboyed means when you burn, you should have said, the same, use the same language that Behuda says. He should search the Eve. If he didn't search the Eve, he should search Betoich Bamboyed, meaning when you're burning the Chametz. So Teisvah says that you have to search, it means Betoich Bamboyed, it means in Yantif. All Yantif Pesach you have to search. The entire Yom Tov Pesach. If you mm. forgot to search for Chametz, in the middle of Yom Tov, you remember, oh, I didn't search for Chametz. Mm. You have to search for Chametz. And then he says, mm. If a whole Pesach went by, you never search for Chametz. You have to search for Chametz even after Pesach. Yeah. Since the rabbis say you're not allowed to eat or benefit from Chametz, that, that, went, that passed by Pesach, if you didn't get rid of the Chametz and you, you held on to your Chametz whole Pesach, even after Pesach, even though biblically it's no longer prohibited, during Pesach, it was poison. You lose your life if you eat this chametz. You're not allowed to have it in your house. But if I violated it and Pesach passes, now it's kosher. Biblically, there's no problem. The rabbi said, the rabbi's penalizing since you didn't search and get rid of it like we told you, commanded you. And you violated the biblical prohibition of having chametz. Therefore, you have to, you have to search. It's, it's prohibited not only from eating, even from benefiting. And therefore, you have to search for it and get rid of it. Because if it's around the house, you're going to come to eat from it or to benefit from it. That's how Tesis learns. Rashi disagrees. Rashi says, no, that this whole argument between Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis is only if you have to search after noon, in the afternoon of, of the 14th. But not on Yom Tov. Yom Tov, everyone agrees you don't have to search. Okay, so now the Gemara, the Gemara says, now the Gemara have learned the beginning of Rabbi Huda meant you have to search three times. My time in Rabbi Huda, why do you have to search three times? Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda, they both said, because the Teda tells us three times you have to get rid of Chametz. A, it says, you're not allowed to see Chametz or, or, um, or sourdough, the yeast. yeast. Shivas Yamim, another Pasik, Shivas Yamim, Surly and Matsu Vatech. And Taylor says, You're not allowed to even find any comments in your house. You shouldn't have any yeast in your house. You shouldn't even find it. And the third Pasik, Are we a medician? Tajabisus and Vatech. You have to get rid of all yeast in your house. So since it says three times, so therefore the rabbi said, You have to search three times. Matsu, Rabbi Yes, 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 Rabbi Alma, what do we see? We can't be looking at the plague. The whole argument is that you have to search after the time. They're not arguing that Behuda says you have to search three times. Mm -hmm. And the rabbi is saying, no, you only have to search once. If you didn't search in the 14th, then you have to search in, in, uh, at night. The eve of the 14th, then you have to search in the morning of the 14th. No, that's not the argument. The only arguing about in the afternoon, if you pass the time, if you have to search or not. Mazutra Masnyach. Mazutra learned the Brice even clearer. It says it even explicitly. Master Daviyes, Daviyes, yes, we learned the Brice every day. Makal Shalei Badak Be'echad Mishlech Prakim Alalu. The Brice states it clearly. If you didn't search one of these three times, in other words, you don't have to search three times. He's saying if you forgot to search on the eve of the 14th, you have a second opportunity in the morning. If you forgot to search in the morning, you have a third opportunity when you burn the chametz in the 11 o'clock in the sixth hour. But if you forgot to search and it's already noon, tough luck, there's no more searching. Stop searching. Don't search. So clearly, it also means what are they arguing about? Why would Rabbi Huda say that once it reaches noon in the 14th, don't search? Why not? You can only, when did the rabbis force you to search, tell you to search only before the prohibition? 
after the time of the prohibition, they told you, no, don't search. Why? It, it's counterproductive. What are you telling him? You're forcing him to search chametz? You're forcing him to deal with chametz? You're forcing him to deal with chametz? You know what's going to happen? He's going to eat it. He'll see a delicious bagel, a delicious <laughs> piece of cake. <laughs> he needs some strength to do some searching. He'll go ahead and eat it. So it's counterproductive. What have you accomplished? You're only forcing him and causing him to go ahead and violate a biblical prohibition. So let it be. Since he canceled the Chametz in the right time, so biblically he already fulfilled the midst of Tajbisu. Why would the Chametz force him to search and search? Rabbanan Safari, Legazin. Rabban said, no, we don't make such a big deal. Tomorrow we'll continue. Tomorrow we'll go into this whole discussion, argument. Why are we worried they will eat? Why we're not worried they will eat? Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful night.